What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, July 24th, 2022 date. It's about 6.57 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 1.5, well, 3.8 now. Looks like it was 1.5 and a 2.0 just bouncing all over the place. We'll go with a 2.0 here into the region of Northern California. Just kicking up. There's the mark there on the Petrolia station right down here on the left bottom side. That earthquake just coming in there on the live stream data. Pretty crazy. All right, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the models out here, the USGS models. Let's bring in the all magnitudes map so we can kind of see what's going on here. In the California region, that 2.0 striking just outside of Eureka, very close to the Petrolia area. That's where the uh, seismograph station is, the one I was showing you there just a minute ago. This 2.0 struck at 28 kilometers down dip. Now this is a subduction zone earthquake. Got the Cascadia subduction zone offshore here, but it does extend here underneath the North American plate by quite a distance. And of course, the further, the further inland, so to speak, on the map you go, the further downstream underneath the North American plate it goes. So uh, a couple earthquakes out there over the last 24 hours. Looks like a 1.8 earlier. Uh, almost close to 24 hour time frame. So one last night, one today. We did have an earthquake way out here in the Blanco fracture zone as well. This one occurring overnight into the region of the uh, Pacific plate here. Low activity throughout the Pacific Northwest, including that earthquake in the Portland region. All this earthquake here, activity that we're looking at on the map is older activity from last night. Not a whole lot going on for renewed movement. We'll check out the Mount St. Helens seismograph station here in just a little bit of course if you take a look at the uh, big picture here got a little earthquake activity ramping up here in our watch zone the 5.1 in the Kermadec trench area kind of down there as well uh, 67 kilometers down dip got to watch these earthquakes right here because they can trigger some larger scale movement upstream along that subduction zone um, but aside from that, the majority of the activity, if we look at it, zoom in a little bit, was some older movement uh, throughout the day and also this morning time frame. We, of course, we did have that volcano uh, in the Japan region pop off overnight in the uh, Sakurajima area, the volcano down here. I'm not seeing any earthquake activity within this region, but it's kind of an explosive eruption. It sent some rocks 1.5 miles away from the volcano. So, uh, and it can go much further than that. 1.5 miles is not that big of a deal when it comes to eruption, but uh, we did have some volcanic activity there today. And um, earthquake activity has been very quiet here. So got, uh, got some stuff going on well below this trench area. We've got to watch this. There's definitely volcanoes there. When we start seeing signs of volcanic activity, uh, definitely something to watch pretty closely. Of course, volcanoes are always erupting all around the Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, some more than others, and of course throughout the Indonesia area as well. So it's not anything new. Uh, the last somewhat eruption for this volcano, the Sakurajima volcano uh, in Japan, it was back in 2020, a little uh, steam ash cloud um, came out of there. Uh, like I say, it, it, it's definitely, uh, it's active, more active right now than it was though over the past couple years. So, all right, let's get back. Uh, let's get back into the West Coast. I know we're uh, drifting around a little bit, but I kind of wanted to look at the Pacific Plate as a whole. Now we go back to the West Coast, some movement. Uh, just off the San Andreas Fault system here. This earthquake occurring overnight uh, last night near Pacifica on the San Andreas Fault. If you look at the map here, not a whole lot in the red circle areas here. Not a whole lot of recent earthquake activity. Yes, there is movement across the ridge here and uh, just north of the Garlock Fault zone. But uh, nothing spectacular showing up. Some of this activity here that you see in the Salton Sea region uh, some older movement from last night as well. So getting ready to drop off. We haven't seen any further activity ramping up here uh, throughout the day today. Uh, but that may, be, that may change. Who knows? We'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, let's see what the trimmer activity is like tonight considering 
the most recent earthquake there in Northern California. That would kind of explain it, right? It wouldn't that explain the activity that we're seeing there? So looking at this map here, we'll bring this up. Uh, kind of goes hand in hand with what I've been saying uh, quite a bit, uh, that the trimmer activity tends to add strain further upstream, increasing the likelihood of earthquakes and also triggering the big one along the Cascadia Megathrust, talking about 9.0 or greater. That would be uh, that would not be good for me because I live up here in Northern California. Uh, definitely be in the strong shaking category here outside of Chico. Uh, but these folks over here would not be uh, it would not be good. So earthquake activity within the region where the trimmer is. Okay. Now notice the trimmer more inland, more uh, around the Redding area. Even though Redding is not happening at Redding, this earthquake or this trimmer activity is happening down there about 35 45 kilometers further down dip than this earthquake that we just seen pop up here within the same vicinity but a little bit further upstream at 28 kilometers so um, remember the further you go down here uh, across the map or in this case to the right uh, the deeper it gets um, and of course shallower as you move to the west here to the left side of the screen somebody sent me a Oh man, they, they sent me an email about the uh, being able to draw on screen here, but I, I forgot to check it out. I, I read the email, but didn't download the app. So I'm gonna download that here after this video. That way I can draw here on the map. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing, uh, kind of see what I'm pointing at. And besides this little arrow right here. Um, so yeah, tremor activity, adding on to some stress up here, uh, further upstream and of course, uh, we see earthquake activity, a little 2.0. Texas, Oklahoma, man, all this activity is very... Uh, this activity is old. It's old as the dirt. Maybe. Not really. Just from earlier this afternoon. Uh, aside from that, nothing throughout Oklahoma, Kansas. New Madrid zone looks pretty quiet. A little activity around the Appalachian Mountains. That was earlier. Uh, way earlier this morning. We did see recently... Uh, out there in earthquake country of South Carolina around the Elgin area another 2.3 this area has seen a quite a bit of swarming activity well not only throughout the last month but over the past couple months here I'd say the past few months a uh, little activity sparking here within this region and most of the earthquakes have been relatively shallow there around two to three kilometers there's some fault systems that run out here and uh, more so down around the uh, Charleston area, North Charleston region of South Carolina. They get some big ones down here. Check out your earthquake history. Uh, that is earthquake country there in South Carolina. Uh, Puerto Rico. What do we got in Puerto Rico? Beautiful Puerto Rico out here. One earthquake, a 3.1. 112 kilometers here. Uh, kind of down into the trench area, it looks like, around the Mar Marotos Trough. Of course, down dip a little bit further. It may look like it's at the surface, but it's way down there, 112 kilometers deep. Not a whole lot going on through South America, at least according to the USGS. This activity from last night. We did have a pretty deep earthquake here around the uh, Brazil area, underneath Brazil. Notice this earthquake is ways away from the subduction zone here. But also note the depth. Again, in any subduction zone, the further away from there, for the most part, uh, earthquake activity is seen down dip, 610 kilometers. And again, way away from the trench area. Of course, we do get the shallow ones, but uh, when we're looking at these deep earthquakes, it uh, kind of makes sense there as the uh, movement underneath the, the plate here, showing some activity of 4.3, way down there. That's pretty deep. Uh, 5.0 in the South Sandwich Islands area, pretty shallow earthquake. This region can see some deep earthquake movement. Of course, last year we had that eight pointer and a whole bunch of other large quakes within this region. This year it's a little bit quieter. Uh, still, we get some fives and fours and whatnot, uh, but within the last 24 hours, a 5.0 in that area. Uh, before we jump on to the uh, Yellowstone, let's check out the Mount St. Helens area see what we got for earthquake activity maybe maybe not yes no maybe so looks like they're having a little issue going on there I know it's not my internet but man that was pretty slow 
Maybe they're working on things. Check out the seismograph viewer here and see what we got. Come on, there we go. Some earthquake activity here within the last couple of hours. A couple of little spikes that you can see there on the graph. And the previous UTC time date. We'll see what they got. Ooh, whistle while you work? No. A uh, little earthquake activity, obviously, seen here in the Mount St. Helens graph. Nothing big, though, folks. I kind of look for some bigger movement in Mount St. Helens that may not be reported. Uh, these microquakes, though, are very typical of uh, the activity uh, there at Mount St. Helens. Just a couple small microquakes. Yellowstone National Park. See what's going on here. Whole lot of nothingness, right? Maple Creek not showing a whole lot of activity. Looks uh, pretty darn quiet. Solar weather activity as well. Um, probably going to not cover this in the next few updates because we are green across the board. Green for the three-day geomagnetic forecast. Green for the solar flare threat. Looking at a decline now in solar flare activity. There is a little coronal hole that will be facing us. Little bitty one, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Uh, and a couple new sunspot developments here. Looks like this one and maybe around here but man it's it's looking like we're going to be entering into a very quiet region but look way back here on the far side northeastern limb i see a little bit of light a little bit of hope there at the end of the tunnel maybe we'll see if we can get some uh, some solar flare activity because these ones here were a little on the wimpy side yes we did see that uh g1 class storm pop up but uh no spectacular flares no major CMEs, just uh, just very minimal. I'm, I'm not liking that one bit. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have, have yourself a great Sunday night. Enjoy the rest of this weekend here, so to speak. Uh, another hot one. We had 108 today here in Willow. It's going to be hotter throughout the rest of the week. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, man, is it going to be hot. I'm not looking forward to this heat. And it looks like the October, well, August, September, October, long distance um, weather forecast is calling for above average temperatures here for the West Coast. So, man, man, oh, man. All right, guys, have a good night. We'll chat you a little bit later on. Stay safe.